in this video, we'll be overviewing a fascinating study by Martinez, Carver and colleagues, exploring how a full range of motion bench press compares to a partial range of motion bench press training only some part of the top range of motion for building strength. Then, we'll make some speculations on how hypertrophy may compare between full and partial range of motion bench press training. We'll also discuss very interesting potential implications of the results from the study. Martinez, Carver and colleagues recruited 49 men with 6 months of training experience and allocated them into a full range of motion, 2 third range of motion, 1 third range of motion or control group. We won't discuss the control group from hereafter, they did not train and expectedly made virtually no gains. All groups trained the Smith Machine Barbell Bench Press twice per week for a total of 10 weeks. Repetitions for the full range of motion group were as follows. They lowered the barbell from full elbow lockout all the way down to the chest, where they momentarily let the bar rest for 2 seconds thanks to the Smith Machine spotters, before reversing the motion. The 2 third range of motion group lowered the barbell from full elbow lockout to only 2 thirds of the way down to the chest, where they momentarily let the barbell rest for 2 seconds thanks to the Smith Machine spotters, before reversing the motion. The 1 third range of motion group lowered the barbell from full elbow lockout to only 1 third of the way down to the chest, where they momentarily let the barbell rest for 2 seconds thanks to the Smith Machine spotters, before reversing the motion. All subjects performed their repetitions with a maximal intended lifting speed and a controlled lowering speed. This was a velocity based study, meaning the velocity of each lifting phase was recorded via special equipment. For each individual, as there's a relationship between the lifting velocity during the first repetition on a set and the relative load you're using, the subjects were able to auto regulate and train with the loads they intended to. The exact reps, sets and loads used throughout the 10 weeks are shown on screen. Of course, the relative loads used for each group are specific to the range of motion they trained with. For example, when subjects trained with a 70% of 1 rep max load, the full range of motion group used 70% of their full range of motion 1 rep max. The 1 third range of motion group used 70% of their 1 third 1 rep max and the 2 third range of motion group used 70% of their 2 third 1 rep max. Before and after the study, a range of strength and power measurements were assessed. Most relevant for our purposes, all 3 groups had their 1 rep maxes on the full range of motion bench press, 1 third range of motion bench press and 2 thirds range of motion bench press tested. The researchers expressed 1 rep max gains relative to the participants body weight. What they found was the full range of motion group saw the greatest gains in 1 rep max to body weight ratios for all 3 bench press variations. Also, the 2 third range of motion group saw greater 1 rep max to body weight ratio gains compared to the 1 third range of motion group. Stated another way, training with the full range of motion bench press, which is what the full range of motion group did, was the most effective for increasing full range of motion bench press. 2 third range of motion bench press and 1 third range of motion bench press 1 rep max to body weight ratios. Also, training with a 1 third range of motion bench press, which is what the 1 third range of motion group did, was the least effective for increasing 1 rep max to body weight ratios on all 3 of the bench press variations. These findings are highly interesting. Not only do they indicate a full range of motion bench press is superior for increasing full range of motion bench press strength, but a full range of motion bench press is also better for increasing partial range of motion bench press strength versus training with that specific partial range of motion itself. It's not entirely clear what could explain these findings. However, could hypertrophy be involved? Although there's no direct research comparing a full and partial range of motion bench press for hypertrophy, indirect data might indicate a full range of motion bench press would be superior. Let me explain. Compared to a partial range of motion bench press training only the top portion, such as a 1 third or 2 third range of motion, 
A full range of motion bench press would achieve a much greater stretch under load of the chest, shoulders and triceps. This matters as stretch under load seems to be powerful for stimulating hypertrophy. The range of studies using exercises other than the bench press has found that using a range of motion that accomplishes a stretch under load of the working muscles produces more hypertrophy than a range of motion that minimally stretches the working muscles. So, how does this all relate to full range of motion bench press training producing the greatest strength gains across the three different bench press range of motions? One way muscles hypertrophy is via something called myofibrils, which are found within muscle fibers, growing. Myofibrils contain contractile units, that is, the force generating units of a muscle. One main way a myofibril grows is via increasing the number of force generating units it has. This would be very beneficial for increasing strength. As a result, perhaps full range of motion bench press training produced more hypertrophy and thus myofibril growth versus training with a one third or two thirds range of motions. Explaining why full range of motion bench press training was the most effective for increasing strength across all three ranges of motions. Of course, this is purely speculation. I think it's almost certain a full range of motion bench press produces more hypertrophy than a partial range of motion bench press that trains only some top portion. But whether this hypertrophy would truly explain the greater strength gains is difficult to verify, as other factors such as neural adaptations and movement efficiency would be in play with strength. Moving on. Martinez, Carver and colleagues mentioned something quite interesting. Powerlifters, of course, aim to maximize their one rep max on the barbell bench press. However, it's arguable that many powerlifters, due to significantly arching their spine and or retracting their scapula, perform a partial range of motion bench press. As this study found training a full range of motion bench press was more effective for increasing partial range of motion bench press strength, than training with that partial range of motion bench press itself. Perhaps powerlifters might benefit from training with a fuller range of motion, via less arching and or scapular retraction, to ultimately enhance their competition way of bench pressing. Furthermore, maybe cambered bar bench pressing, due to increasing the range of motion even further, could be beneficial for those looking to maximize their normal bench press one rep max. Before ending this video, let us discuss some notable limitations and considerations of the Martinez, Carver and colleagues study. Firstly, as many of you were probably thinking, a Smith machine was used. There are way more similarities between the Smith machine and barbell bench press than differences, but differences such as stabilization requirements and bar path still exist. It's not clear if these differences would change anything if the Martinez, Carver and colleagues study used a barbell. Secondly, there actually is some data that somewhat opposes the findings of the Martinez, Carver study. Two studies by Massey and colleagues had subjects either train, a full range of motion bench press, we'll call the full range of motion group, a partial range of motion bench press, training only the first 2 to 5 inches of the motion we'll call the partial range of motion group, or an even split of both full and partial range of motion bench pressing, we'll call the combination group. Before and after the study, the researchers only measured one rep max on the full range of motion bench press for all three groups. In one of the studies, conducted on women with limited training experience, the full range of motion group experienced the greatest increases in full range of motion bench press one rep max versus the two other groups. These findings do not conflict with the Martinez, Carver and colleagues study. However, in the other study conducted on men with some training experience, all three groups experienced increases in full range of motion bench press 1 rep max that was not statistically different between one another. Put another way, training a partial range of motion bench press, or a combination of full and partial range of motion bench pressing, was measurably no less effective than training a full range of motion bench press for increasing full range of motion bench press 1 rep max. It's not readily clear what explains these conflicting data, 
more research is evidently still going to be valuable and insightful. Lastly, remember that all the bench press studies we've overviewed used a partial range of motion that trained the top part. But, could there be any benefit to a partial range of motion that trains the bottom part? We've overviewed earlier that one reason as to why I think the full range of motion bench press would produce more hypertrophy than a partial one that trains the top part is as the full range of motion achieves a greater stretch under load of the chest, shoulders and triceps. But, a partial range of motion that trains the bottom part would accomplish a stretch under load of the working muscles too. Therefore, perhaps this would be perfectly fine for muscle hypertrophy. In fact, could it be superior? I question this as a study by Pedrosa and colleagues, which we've overviewed in a previous video, actually found a partial range of motion leg extension at the bottom part, where the quadriceps are stretched, produced overall more quadriceps growth than full range of motion leg extensions. Of course, this study used a leg extension, thus, we cannot be certain these findings can be replicated with the bench press. Ultimately, it would be awesome to see if future research can explore the effectiveness of a partial range of motion that trains the bottom part for hypertrophy, as well as if this type of partial range of motion could have any benefit for powerlifters or those looking to generally maximize their full range of motion bench press strength.